Why the hell is it so popular to hate on Star Wars The Last Jedi? It's entertaining, it's fun to watch, and there's no crappy piece of shit dialogue that drags the fucking plot down and may leads to one of the worst and most toxic relationships ever depicted on film! What was I talking about? Oh right, uh, Last Jedi. Anyway, Star Wars The Last Jedi is seemingly the most despised Star Wars movie. Like, not even Attack of the Clones seems to get hated on as much. Despite that it's a much worse movie. Alright, I will admit there are a number of dumb things about the movie. Rose is fairly poorly written. Cantobite is a scene that drags on way too long and overall just kind of drags the movie down. Holdo doesn't really give the Resistance a reason to trust her outside of I'm the commander and you have to do what I say, which does lead to Finn leading the whole rebellion thing. But here's the thing. What actual reasons can you give me that this movie is bad? I'm not talking things that you didn't like about the movie. I'm talking things that are actually bad. I don't think there are, at least none that can actually be explained away in-universe. I also think that people can't get over the fact that their personal theories about what's going to happen in the movie... I also think that people can't get over the fact that their personal theories about what would occur didn't happen because, you know, they didn't write the fucking film. Now, I've always watched the Star Wars movies as B-movies. Because that's what they were originally meant to be. No, really, I'm not kidding. Episode 4 wasn't supposed to have sequels. It was its own standalone film. It was originally just titled Star Wars. It ends with the threat being taken out and them getting medals. Tell me how that's conducive to a sequel. I think the reason that so many people hate it is because... It's the new Star Wars. Seriously, this happens almost every time that there's a popular franchise and something comes out in it. Episode 5, which is considered by many fans to be the best Star Wars movie, was hated upon its release by fans and critics alike because it was considered too dark. Episode 6 was hated because of the Ewoks. The prequels are hated because, you know, they're unnecessary, but they were still hated despite the fact that they're not really that bad. I have my own problems with the prequels, but that more involves that prequels are notoriously hard to write, so I don't blame them you know, in general for not being as good as the originals. Prequels are always a mess, generally. It's also... Here's another thing about Episode 8, just real quick. It's the middle of the damn story. Like... It's the middle. We don't know where it's going to go. Or, depending on if you're watching this after Episode 9 comes out, didn't at the time of recording this. So, you know, it's a little hard for me to judge it um, in terms of its own standalone thing when it's not. It is specifically the middle of the freaking arc that this one is telling. So, yeah, there's another reason I don't really see to hate it. Okay, so after that long introduction, let's get into why I think The Last Jedi is a good movie. Yeah, one of the biggest arguments I hear is at the very end, when Rey lifts the cave-in out of the way to save the Resistance from the evil space Nazis that are the First Order. Um, a lot of people seem to have issue that she was able to lift the entire cave-in with minimal training. Why? We've seen other Jedi do the same or similar things with the Force. Is it because she's a girl? I think that it's because she's a girl. Okay, okay, not really, but I don't understand why... She gets as much hate for that as she does. In Empire, Yoda tells Luke that you don't really need a ton of training to be able to use the Force in powerful ways. That pretty much all you need is the focus to be able to do it. So if that's true and all you need is the focus to be able to pull off stronger and more powerful Force things, and with her being as stated to be one of the most powerful force users, literally on par with Kylo Ren, who, at the time, was the most powerful force user that Luke had ever encountered, why wouldn't she be able to do something like that if she had the focus to pull it off? I don't just... When people are like, oh, she didn't have the training, 
we've heard from others in the past, you don't totally need that. So, I don't see why the movie gets so much hate for her being able to pull it off. Another thing that a lot of people complain about is the whole Leia space flight scene. You know, the one where she pulls herself towards uh, the um, resistance star cruiser. Why do people have a problem with this? In Legends, she was trained as a Jedi by Luke and actually fights as one. So it's not that much of a narrative leap to assume that she has had at least some force training by Luke within the main universe. So why? She just manipulated the pull. She made the anger point the ship as opposed to her so she got pulled towards it. We've seen other Jedi do similar things. It's how they're able to keep themselves on ships if they go spacewalking in fights. Plo Koon does it in the Clone Wars. So yeah, it's a bit awkward to watch, but it's not enough to get mad about, or at least not enough for me to get mad about. Okay, now, Rose. Not the best written character. I am one of the first people to say that about her. But there is not nearly as much reason to hate her as people seem to give. She is a soldier who is grieving the loss of her sister after she had been killed in a run against the M against the First Order. And she wants to take out the First Order by any means necessary. If we weren't given Canto Bite as a scene and subsequently hadn't heard her backstory, no one probably would have given that much of a fuck. Yes, what she does at the end of the film is kind of dumb, but... When I think about it, I don't actually think that would have done anything, and if anything, Finn probably would have died for nothing. Just gonna throw that out there. Gonna make another video about this movie at a later date, where I go over what I think some of the problems are and we can do to fix them. I just, I don't see really any reason to hate her character as much as she gets hated on. And I think... Part of it comes down to her being a girl. In fact, I think most of it comes down to her being a girl. If she was a guy, and given that same backstory, people have been like, oh, cool, good reason to hate the First Order. Yeah, at least I think that would have happened. But, you know, it didn't. So, I, I don't understand the whole hatred of her as a character. Well, I can't wait to get so much hate in this video for saying that Rose is hated because she's a girl. Cue hate comments. There are a number of other things that I've heard people complain about with this film um, that I don't have a ton of time to get into because if I went into depth into all of them, this video would last for 20 years. So I'm just going to quickly go over some of the bigger ones. Luke being different from how he was at the end of Return. Yeah, because 30 years, 10 of which were spent in solitude after your most powerful students that came to the dark side and murdered the rest of your students totally wouldn't change a person in any way, shape, or form. At all. Hodo's plan of not telling anyone about her plan. Thing is, she told the subordinates high up enough that needed to know, and there was a potential spy within the Resistance. She's not going to tell everyone... Finn had literally just disobeyed orders, specifically going against what he had been told, and also, here's one thing, in a military setting, you don't have to understand the commander's orders. You just have to follow them. So she didn't really do anything wrong, and in the context, understandable. I think another reason that she is hated a lot is because she is also a girl. Yay, more hate comments. Snoke being taken up by a threat. My current working theory before episode 9 has come out. Snoke is being controlled by a bigger and better threat. We will find out when that movie airs. Also, the fact that he's so goddamn arrogant that he couldn't see himself being taken up by someone like Kylo Ren, yet definitely doesn't have anything to contribute to him getting taken out the way he did at all. Ray's parents being nobodies. Here's the thing, Kylo never tells her that. He lets her believe it because that's what she's believed her entire life. He 
seems to confirm it, but he doesn't actually. He lets her come to that conclusion, and then lets her keep believing it without directly contradicting it. He was most likely lying to get her on his side. That is how that scene plays out. Watch it again if you don't believe me. And finally, why hasn't anyone ever used droid piloted ships or the Separatists use Vulture droids with hyperdrives to take up enemy ships if it's such an effective tactic? Presumably because it's expensive as fuck. It's probably expensive to make and buy hyperdrives. They're not... Yeah, we see them common, but... They're still only in a few ships, they're not in everything, so presumably it is slightly expensive to make them. Two, you seemingly have to be so freaking close to your enemy ship that it almost becomes pointless. The only reason that Holda was able to ram her ship at hyperspeed into the First Orders is because they didn't see it coming. They didn't realize that's what she was about to do. They thought that she was running away. So... Yeah, also, if you're even just a few degrees off from miles back, you're missing that fucking target. I, I don't care. You're missing that target if you're that far back when you make that jump. And third, probably the biggest one, ships that small, like ones that would be piloted by droids or vulture droids, are too small to have hyperdrives in them. It is pretty much stated that Solo ship and ships slightly smaller than the Millennium Falcon are about as small as you can get to have a hyperdrive in them. Vulture droids can't have them, and ships small enough for single pilots can't have them either. Yes, the Jedi have the hyperdrive rings in the prequels, but you still have to attach your ship to the hyperdrive ring to be able to jump a ship that small to hyperdrive. So, again... You most likely can't fit a hyperdrive into a vulture droid or a single man ship. Also, just my thoughts as a non-military leader. <sighs> Bankrupting my fucking army to potentially win a war with a tactic that may or may not work is not fucking worth it. I am not willing to lose everything to potentially win a war that I would then need to somehow recoup those costs. No! Potential bankruptcy is not worth winning, damn it! So to recap, Rey's powers make sense in context, considering how powerful she is. Leia's spaceflight most likely would have worked the way it's depicted in film. Rose is fairly poorly written, but not enough to get as much hatred as she does, and most likely hated because she is a girl. Wasting money doesn't win wars. Holda was in command, so she didn't actually need to have her plans checked off by, subor by subordinates that potentially couldn't have been trusted. Also probably hated because she's a girl. Kylo was most likely lying to Rey to get her on his side to help him win against the Resistance once and for all. And Luke definitely would have changed within 30 goddamn years. So... I can't understand why this movie is hated as much as it is. I, like I said earlier, I think it comes down to this being the new Star Wars. Empire was hated, Return was hated, the prequels were hated, Clone Wars was hated almost when it was released, Resistance seemed to get a lot of hatred when it came out, Rebels the same thing, and the sequels are also getting hatred. <sighs> if you truly love this franchise, stop hating every new thing that it does. These movies were never meant to be groundbreaking cinema. They weren't meant to be these great groundbreaking, oh my god, this is the best thing ever films. They're meant to be fun action flicks. That's all they should be watched as. If you truly love Star Wars, take a step back and look at episode 8 again as objectively as possible. It is actually a very good movie when you look at it in that context. And I think that if pe more people looked at it that way, they would find it a hell of a lot more enjoyable than a lot of people seem to find it. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, um, my look at why I think episode 8 is actually a fairly good movie. If you liked it, uh, be sure to like um, and comment on the video. If you didn't like it, be sure to like and comment on the video. Uh, consider subscribing if you aren't already, if you want to keep up with the channel. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links to those are going to be in the description down below. As always, I also plan to do a video um, on episode 8 again uh, 
kind of analyzing some of the problems that I think the movie has, uh, kind of overall, um, and what I think could be done to fix or at least minimize them. Uh, I hope you guys uh, look forward to that. Have a great day, guys. As always, peace out.